Hey guys, Dave here. Uh, in this video, we're going to use GIMP, and I'll provide a link to where you can download GIMP for free uh, to edit one of the scratch off tickets. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, in this first part of the video, we're going to edit one of the JPEGs. Okay, so you can see over here in the layer box, I only have one layer, and that's the background image, or, or it says it's the background layer. Um, but this would actually be a foreground image, right? Because this is the image that they're going to scratch off. So what you're going to want to do is take this image and then create two or three images um, from it that say you won, you lost, uh, such and such, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, if you wanted to change the text over here, the save to receive prizes and savings, um, you would need to edit that in the layers. And I'll show you how to do that here towards the end of the video. The easiest way to edit this part of it, because what you're looking to do is create a background image that's identical to the foreground image, except for this part of it right here, right? So the easiest way to do that inside of GIMP is to come over here, and we're going to use our rectangle select tool and we're just going to select a square that's the same size. Now once we have this rectangle here um, we can move it around like so and let's just put it back where and we can resize it so we can dial it in and get it perfect okay now what we're going to want to do with this is also enable rounded corners. To do that you come over here and you click rounded corners and that's going to add this radius bar. So you can see see as, see what's happening to the rectangle as I slide this. The corners are getting more and more and more rounded. So what we're going to do is we're going to match this up so it's very, very close to the rounded corners here. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to fill this with white. So over here in the toolbox, this is our foreground Im or foreground color and background color and we can swap those by clicking this little arrow right here so we're gonna wanna fill that with white so we're gonna swap white to the foreground color now if we wanted to fill it with red all we would do would be click on this color that would open up the color dialog box from here we can choose any color that we want we want white so I'm just gonna click cancel so we have this area selected now what we want to do is add a new layer, okay? So we're going to click this button right here. This adds a new layer. We want this layer filled with transparency because it's going to be on top of the background layer. Uh, so I'm going to click OK. You can see we've added the new layer, okay? So now we want to make sure that that layer is selected. Take our bucket fill tool and that's going to fill the rectangle selected area of this layer with the foreground color. So we're just going to take the bucket fill tool, we're already set to white, we're already set on the new layer, we're going to come in here inside the rectangle and click. And that's going to fill with white. Okay, now we want to come up here and go select none and that'll get rid of our rectangle selection. From here we want to add text so we're gonna click on this big letter A which is our text box okay we can set the size of the text the color of the text now we're gonna want this to black so we're gonna choose, click on the color down here and choose black you can see now our text is set to black and that also changed the foreground color so you need to keep that in mind and let's pick our font um, I'm gonna come up here and just use hand of Sean I like that font quite a bit. I don't know why, but I'm going to pick Hand of Sean. Now with our text tool, we're just going to draw a text window that's roughly the same size that we want to place this in. You can see our text editor has been opened up. We'll just move that over here. Now we can just come in here and go, uh, you won, uh, claim, can't spell today. Uh, claim your prize by clicking here.
Okay, now you can see what happens. Sometimes this happens in GIMP. Our text box shrunk down to just the size of the first letter. So all we have to do is just grab the corners and drag this back up to the size that we want. Now you can see it's left justified. We want this centered. So we're going to come over here. We're going to click Center Justified. And we're going to just bring the font size up until we're happy with the way it looks. And it's that simple. Okay, now we can move this text around just by going into the center of the text box and moving things around. And we can resize and do all of that stuff from right here. Um, now, from here, let's say, I, let's say that this text was red. So let's just change this to red real quick. So now we've got red text. And let's say I wanted to add a drop shadow to this text. I would come over here to my layer box and I would right click and go alpha to selection. Now you can see the text has got all the ants crawling around the perimeter so it's all selected. I can close my text editor now. And then I would come up and click on script foo. Now if you don't have script foo installed in GIMP, um, just do a quick Google search for it and you'll find tons and tons of YouTube videos on how to install script foo. And what this does is it gives you a bunch of really cool layer effects. So I'm going to click drop shadow and that actually opened up in the background here so I got to click on it, bring it to the foreground. And I'm going to set my opacity at about 50%. The size 5 pixels, offset distance 5 pixels, that's good. I'm going to click OK. And you can see it added that drop shadow. But now what that does is it kind of makes this look muddy. So what I like to do when I'm using these drop shadows is while this is still selected, if I come up here and to the Select menu and click Grow, I'm going to grow this selection by 2 pixels. And you can see it got bigger. So now with my drop shadow layer selected, I'll come up here and click Edit and Clear. And let me hit Select None real quick. So you can see what that did is it gave me a two pixel white space between the letters and the drop shadow. And that really makes your, your text pop off the page and cleans it back up. So that's the easiest way to do this. Now, that would be our winner prize. Let's say we, we want our loser message in here as well. All we would have to do is come in here, highlight the layer that we don't want anymore. So we don't want the drop shadow. We can trash it. And we don't want the text. So we can trash it. Okay, now we're back to our regular image. Now I'm going to hit Control Z, which is the undo um, keyboard shortcut for Windows. I don't know what it is on a Mac. You can also come up here to edit and click undo. So that would add the layer back in because we undid the remove layer. Let's undo again. And let's undo again. Okay, so now we're back to where we were just a minute ago. Now what I can do is I can save this as a PNG or a JPEG or whatever. I like PNGs for the following reason. What we can do is, let's say we want to make our loser message, we can come up here and go File, Save As, and we can put our ticket name in and our file extension of PNG. And I'm just going to show you this real quick and click Save. And you can see it's going to say Merge Visible Layers. Okay, Visible Layers is the key, right? So from here we'd click export and we'd save it. So what you can do is instead of deleting those layers, you can just hide them by clicking this little eyeball and that will turn them off. So now I can take my text tool and I can come in here and add more text and let's just say this is the loser message, right? And then because that's all that's visible, I can just do a save as again, and it will only save the visible layers. So that way you can keep this all organized and leave it all right here in your layer box, and you can just turn on the stuff that you want to see and turn it back off. Okay? 
Now let's say for a minute you want to edit this scratch to receive prizes and drawings. Well, on this ticket, you could actually do this a couple of ways. You could come in here with your rectangle box, draw a rectangle over it, add a new layer, go to your bucket fill tool, and just fill that with black and blot it out. Okay? But on some of these tickets, on the more sophisticated ones, that would cause you a problem. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to open a different one. And let me just open, um, I want the crowns for this demo. Crowns in blue. Blue horizontal, I want this one. And let me close this and bring this guy down here real quick. Okay, so the problem with trying to just blot that out is that this isn't a solid color back here. So if I draw my rectangle select box and try and fill that with a color, I'm never going to make that look right, plus I'm probably going to take the tip off of that corner. So in that case, what we want to do is we want to open the PSD. So let's come over here and grab the Crowns PSD from the Scratch Ticket PSD. So we grab this Crowns PSD, and I'm just going to open that guy up. We're going to convert this and just accept it like that. Now what you can see is all of the individual layers for every single element in this ticket are here individually. For instance, I can turn off some of these crowns if I want to. Right? What we're looking to do now is get rid of this scratch to receive prizes and savings. And you can see that's this text layer right here where it actually says scratch to receive. So now if we just turn that off, we can come in here with our text tool, we can pick white, and we can come right over here and put our text in. Just like that. So let me do this real quick. And I'm just going to expand this box just a little bit. Expand this down a little bit come down here, shrink my font size down, just so you get the idea. Now from there, I can just save this ticket. Now we can also come in here to the layers, and we can turn off the crowns, the scratch surface, if you will. So if I turn that off, and start turning off all the crowns, you can see that the congratulations, you're a winner, is actually buried under there. Now from here, you would just go File, and do a Save As, and save um, the ticket how, after you're done editing it. Save it as a PNG or a GIF or a JPEG or some WordPress acceptable bitmap format. I prefer PNGs. I think they're the most, um, they're the easiest to work with. So we'll put a link uh, to download the GIMP software. I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking to do something even fancier with GIMP, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff, and if you just do a YouTube search for GIMP tutorial, you will find a ridiculous amount of killer tutorials for the GIMP software. That's how I learned it, and you can learn to do pretty much anything that Photoshop will do. You can do right here in GIMP, and it doesn't cost you anything. So thanks again for picking up uh, WP Scratch and Save, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Have a great day, everybody.